Oh, it affected my, my children quite a bit with uh, being in school, having to homeschool. Um, the grades went down and my wife not being able to work because of restrictions and being basically sent home for a while. Um, myself personally, my work wise, it didn't affect me at all at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I really saw, and we are still three years later dealing with the mental damage that has happened to our children because of what the government has done. Well, my daughters were 13 and four when this started. And um, as you can imagine, a 13 year old, just barely into teen years and not being able to be around friends, having to stay home, no socializing. It's been three years and we still can't get her to leave the house. Um, she has next to no friends. My four-year-old, social butterfly, we're out and about every weekend doing things as a family. And well, she took it pretty hard as well with not being able to do anything but stay at home. And it's been three years and we're just trying to catch up with some fun stuff that we could do as a family, but it's um, with a four-year-old that doesn't understand why, but we, we have to try to find answers every day for the questions as to why we can't go swimming, why can't we go to the library, why can't we go to the gym. It's been very rough it, dealing with uh, all of this, and it also had a huge impact on our marriage. We, we just about got separated because of the stress of being at home all the time and being together and not knowing how to deal with the day to days when you can't do anything. And one income, we went from two incomes to one income. So, Financially speaking, we're trying to still catch up from that as well. So it's it's been a horrendous three years, and I don't I don't understand why any of it had to happen. I truly believe that the citizens of Canada were never ever thought about in any decision that the government's made at all. It was their narrative, it was what they thought about, it was had nothing to do with a single person living in this country outside of their bubble. The impact it has had on so many citizens and my extended family as well. They there's, in my opinion, there's not a shred of doubt that we weren't even a consideration to them at all. None of it made sense. None of their rules made sense. Where did the six foot rule come from? Was there any scientific data backing that up? How come you could wear, you had to wear a mask, but you could wear it take it off when you're sitting down. It's like the smartest virus I've ever seen. It knew where you were sitting and when you were standing. There was nothing that made sense about what they did. Nothing. As a father of two, I would look at my wife and my children on a daily basis and think, what's all this for? What am I working for when the government can so easily just shut our lives down? What am I working for? What, this is not the country that I grew up in. 
I'm looking at my, at the time, four-year-old daughter, and I'm feeling sad that I even brought her into this world that there's no hope, no future. If the government can do this, then what the hell is the point of anything that we're doing? There is no point to it at all. And I would apologize to my wife and my kids regularly for something we can't even control. You know, I grew up and I went to a couple of conservative party meetings because if the governments, they work for us. They work for us. And I decided to get party memberships for the three major parties. And I said it at all three meetings. What, as a father, you, gr you look at your children and you envision what you want for their lives. You have hopes and you have dreams and you work to give to your kids everything that you didn't have, everything you couldn't have to give them the best opportunity in life that you can possibly give them. And after three years of this nonsense and trying to catch up from all the garbage we had to put up with because of what the government's done to us, I feel like a failure as a father because we got screwed over so hard by what the government wouldn't allow us to do. And yeah, I spent three years apologizing to my family for something that's not my fault. Why? You're censoring doctors. You're censoring one side of the narrative. Everything is one-sided. Not one person. The minute one person had a different opinion, we were censored. It doesn't take common sense to realize what's going on. If you censor, I thought we lived in Canada where we have free speech. Why? then why are we being censored? Why are doctors saying one thing and then losing their licenses? Why? And then you're gonna... <sighs> why? One big three letter word, why? I don't think there's anything the citizens have to do. The trust that the government has broken, it's on them to fix. And I hate to say it, but I don't see that happening. Not with the governments that we have that are not willing to be held accountable to the people. It's all on the government to fix what has happened, to build trust. and to bring healing to this country. It is on them to own this and to apologize. And if there's one thing I've learned in the last three years is that there's not a politician I trust anymore at all. You have to earn that back. You guys broke it, you have to earn it back. And until then, there's no healing, not for me and not for my four-year-old at all. My four-year-old would listen to the news and Justin Trudeau would come on TV and my little girl said, Dad, the bad king is on TV again. Four years old. There's no healing. There's no, there's no coming back from this until the politicians do what they need to do and that's to apologize for completely overreacting and killing so much of this country. The heart and soul of this country is not here anymore. It's just not. This is not the Canada I was proud to grow up in. Not anymore, it's not.
My 16-year-old daughter is Syra. Her name's Syra, and she's, for the first time since starting ha having to be homeschooled, she's back in public school. She's not enjoying it. Um, she's finding it awkward to be in class, to be around a lot of kids. Still a lot more content to be isolated in her room. And my seven-year-old daughter, Micaiah, she went from daycare to it being shut down. And we found a like-minded family where she could attend a day home, which turned into homeschooling. And she's seven and still hasn't been to public school is asking if she can go to public school. And I mean, she's bouncing back a lot easier than the 16 year old is, but thanks to all of this, I don't know if I want my daughter in public school and I don't sugarcoat anything for my kids. They've known right from the start where I stand and to this day, they know that dad's fighting for them and that's not going to stop. Well, I look at a lot of the other people that are raising kids or teenagers and they just want to move on from this. And that's great. I'd love to as well. But are you okay with what they did to us? Are you okay with what they did and how easily they could just pull the pin on our lives? Are you okay with not standing up and having something to say about it to make sure that this never, ever happens again, ever? It's not your future and it's not mine. I'm old enough not to care about my future anymore. But I have kids and they deserve better than this. And if you don't care about your kids enough to stand up and fight, then I can't. There's nothing I can say. But if you love your kids, then get off the couch and do something. It's not your future. It's theirs.